Sorry, official, not unofficial. Official. Seventy. What? Seventy. At least you can write that one down so that you have nothing. It's from research now. So if you don't write it down, that means I'm wasting my time. Seventy-one point five eight billion dollars in ten years. The world knows something. The question is, what do they know that we don't? What is that thing that they know that causes the front part of every plane coming into Africa to be filled with white people and the back part of every plane leaving Africa to be filled with black people? What do they know? Do you not know that every time you go from a less developed country to a more developed country, they call you an immigrant? And if you come from a more developed country to a less developed country, they call you an expatriate. Yeah. <laughs> what do they know? Are you ready to know? Yes. Are you ready to know? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have the time to deal with all of this. They understand time and chance. Those guys, they have people who are able to tell the future. They are called futurists. Futurists are paid by corporations to tell the future. And they are able to tell where is the shift in economics going. And what they do is they go ahead of actualization to make preparation there. That preparation is what is called foreign direct investment. Many of these com companies, they call them the Fortune 500 companies, are the ones investing in Nigeria and in Africa. Africa today is the second la largest um, uh, region where investment is being foreign direct investment is. Middle East is the largest. And these guys essentially are looking for opportunities. Walmart is buying com a company in South Africa. They are setting up in South Africa. They are setting up all over the place. This hotels are being bought, right? Protea has just been bought by, what's the name of it? Golden Tulip. Golden Okay, good. They, they are all over the place. So I don't know what industry you are in, but if they are not already dominating your industry, ladies and gentlemen, they will soon be there. And when they come, they are coming full and loaded. I just want to give you two statistics that I tell you three things. Number one, in 2013, I want to tell you the people that you are going to compete with. In 2013, the top 500 companies in the world, who are called global companies, made a turnover, that is sales, of $31 trillion. 500 companies. $31 trillion. Let me see if I can help you just to reduce that so that your mind does not. Their profits grew to $2 trillion. That is $2,000 billion. That's what $2 trillion is. That is profitable. Imagine if all these companies were owned by Christians. How much is the tithe here? <laughs> Tell me now. $200 billion would have come in if their companies were paying tax. tax. But they don't pay tax. They are even willing to pay tax. And there is one tax, just one tax in called the corporate tax. 25.1%. 25.1% brings their tax, one tax that they pay to the United States government mostly, because they are most, most of those companies are US companies, to $502 billion. Five hundred companies paying five hundred and two billion dollars in one tax. So, so that you can try and put it into context. Let me help you understand. If we convert it at one sixty two official rates, not black marketing, that comes to eighty one point three trillion is what five hundred companies, five hundred ideas produced in one tax. Remember what our, our, our budget was last year? 
So if you these 500 companies produced 20 times the budget of Nigeria, 500 companies, in tax, not in profit, tax. Let me put it in. When you look at how much was allocated to, to education, 426 billion, that is 191 times what was allocated by the federal government to education. That was what these guys paid in tax. If they were going to put it in health, it would come to 291 times. What government could have done? If it was going to come to agriculture, 996 times. I didn't say that's how much they made, though. I said that is how much they paid in tax. If you went to power, it is over 1,095 times what government voted for power. If you went to security, 77 times what they voted. That is tax. 500 companies. Petroleum, 1,336 times what. Listen, do you understand? And I'm saying that we can be the ones if we will do the following things. Now, let me tell you. I met a young lady a few years ago and she tantalized my soul. When I got talking to her, I started to have palpitations. My heart started to do And before I knew it, you know they say, a man pursues a woman until she catches him. <laughs> I was caught, smitten. The young girl, by the name of Tara, 13 years ago, 13 years ago. When I met her, she was, she, what struck me about her was just her sheer diligence. The young girl whose father had just died, and yet she was paying the school fees of her two younger sisters. Young girl. I couldn't believe it. And she was using her hand to do makeup for people. And the money that she would get, rather than buying clothes, she would use to pay school fees of her sisters that were in Federal Government Girls College. I was a business consultant. I knew how to build businesses. I was working in Philips Consulting, and I found out that I had a mission. So I started to share ideas with her, what we could do with the works of her hands. And before we knew it, ladies and gentlemen, we started to build an organization called House of Time. Today, House of Tara has 19 branches across Nigeria. We have our own makeup line. And that's not all. I wish I actually do have these pictures here. I'll show you. Today, almost every lady that is of real substance has one Tara product or the other. You, thank you. Is that one guy? I say, I say that you are. Very, very <laughs> To the point where if you say makeup in Nigeria, what do you think most people will say? Now, do you understand that that market is controlled by global brands? Now, before Tara, what you had was Iman, Mark, Bobby Brown. Yes. You, you understand what I'm saying? Fashion fair. And, and, and these were the brands around. So when the idea came from God that we could build a local global brand, it seemed like the same kind of idea God spoke to me about Nigeria 2025. But we have not only done so today, just last, towards the end of last year, we were visited by the largest makeup brand in the world called Oriel. Wow. And some of you read it in the papers in February that L'Oreal engaged House of Tara in partnership to try to push their Maybelline line. Wow. 
Because they said House of Tara had the deepest distribution chain in Nigeria. So when they came into Nigeria to push it, they said that the only place it makes sense is to ride on the back of the Tara distribution. Something that took us about 14 years to do it. So I want to tell you how we did it. Do you want to know? Yeah. There are three things I'm going to tell you and then I'll close my door. The first thing that we decided was that we were going to play world class and not less. That if we were going to have products that would carry the name of a child of God, those products had to be world class. Notice, Mac does not produce their own products now. I mean, Bobby Brown does not produce, they don't have a factory. So all we had to do was find out where do they produce, let us go there. We found out that they produce in two major places. One in the US and the other one in China. And we got on the road and went to those places. And by favor of God, we started to produce in the same places, the same factories that produce the global products we produced. Why did we go there? Because number one, this is the first thing I want to show you. You must have a world class standard of excellence. You cannot fight a global brand with an inferior product. If you are a speaker, is it not PowerPoint that they use? Why should your presentation be less than the presentation of someone that comes from America? When I have the same machine that they are using, I'm using the same software. And I have the Spirit of God Almighty that the earth is His, not just one nation. God does not have border. Men created borders. So the Spirit of God is a world class spirit. Why should I be operating like a Nigerian? I can operate from Nigeria, but I will not operate like Nigeria. The same way we decided we're going to build a company, we're going to build a world class company. From the name alone, you would have known our intention House of Tara International. When we set our vision, we set the vision to build an African a global company of African origin. Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Tell the person next to you, set world class standard. You cannot behave like a Nigerian and then go and start to compete. Even if they guarantee your space by local context, it's not sustainable. Local content can create an opportunity, but it cannot sustain. You must have world class standard. The next thing that we did was that we realized that we were like David's dealing with a Goliath. David was small in size, Goliath was large in size. But the only way David was able to attack Goliath was head on. Why? Why didn't David try and go and stab Goliath from the back? Listen, Goliath was covered from head to toe in metal from the back. But from the front, there was a portion that was empty. Did you, did you get it? Yes. Goliath's shield, oh sorry, his, his helmet covered his whole back. But the face here was open. You understand? Yes. The rest of it was covered. So the only place you can attack Goliath is by facing him. Yes, sir. You can't attack Goliath by fearing him. No. What did, what was our own stone? Our stone was the little thing that we had that they didn't have. And it was called ethnicity. Mm. We decided to celebrate our ethnicity not to behave as if we had to tolerate the limitation of it. So, we started to create products, world-class products, but we named them according to Nigerian women. So we have, yeah, 
the, the, the product itself is called Tara Orekelewa, meaning, and you know what Orekelewa means, the beauty of the maiden. The second thing was we started having products like Queen India, Queen Amina, Fumirans of uh, 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 of Kuti. We have Arese. We have we have local names for global products. That strategy is called local. <laughs> local. <laughs> so people will use it, and they will say, "Wow." Why? Because they almost were not expecting it. So we pleasantly surprised the people. The third thing that we did was we engaged the heart of the people and empowered by empowering them. Before most of the people like Mrs. Cleo would have looked at Tara, the first people that were able to look at Tara were people who didn't have any money. Young girls that didn't have any hope and we wanted to empower them so that they will not have to beg any man for recharge card. This was the intention with which we went into empowerment. We went into empowerment for one simple reason, that we wanted to empower young girls to be financially independent so that they will never be tempted into moral compromise. It was a laudable cause. We did not even know that the wealth that was going to come from it was stupendous. We didn't. So today, over 3,000 girls all over Nigeria, that if you call them, they will ask you, who are you? What did you say? I should come to where? What do you want to give them? 3,000 girls that are paying their own rent, that are paying rent for their parents, because they get a house of Tara, they get Tara products at 50% of the market value. So they make a 100% profit. 100% profit. Do you think that if we wanted to make more money, we would not have increased the price? Ladies and gentlemen, a great mentor of mine just came in, Pastor Larry Oliche. Please, can you just bless him? So what was the first thing that we did? One plus product. Go in charge, determine in your heart to build a world class standard. You are not a local champion. You are a global star. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Jesus called us light. Light has no border. Number two, we went after a global strategy. Meaning that we started to customize our products, global products, for local need. Mary Kay did not have the skin tone of the Nigerian girl. Mark did not have the skin, they didn't have powder shades for Nigerians. Iman did not have it. All the people that were using it, they would look like a mother Uber. The yellow face, dark body. Because they will use powders that were different from their skin shape. We changed that for life. Mm -hmm. Then we started looking for eyeshadows that will complement the dark skin. So you will see the, what they call the high intensity pigmentation products that we created. Called it. Why? We noticed that when you use a, a particular eyeshadow, after about 2, 3, 4 hours, the eyeshadow will, will dull. Not because it was not nice. That's why ladies always have to go into the bathroom to touch up. For scare, they don't have time. Everybody in the hustle. So we have to give them a product, an eyeshadow that will last you next week if they don't want to the bathroom. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? So we have to go local. Create global products for local needs. The last thing was we engaged the heart of the people by empowering them. We did a research, and the research showed why do beauty reps buy Tara products? The first reason they said was a local independent of research. The first reason that they said was because it was a good product. 
People like the shapes, they like the quality, they like the feel. The second thing that they said was because it was their own product. It was our own Timatua, our own, our own, it was our own product because of ethnicity. The third reason why people buy House of Tara products was because of Tara and Elaborate. Because of Tara and Elaborate. Most people that were studying said the laboratory had come to their university seven years, eight years, nine years before, and don't, and spoken to their soul. They had met him in a church. They met him in a seminar. Tara came to a woman's program. Tara did this. Tara did that. These were the testimonies that people were saying. Oh, I saw Fela on television. If it is that Fela, I am sure the product of his wife was okay. So in a sense, our own personal lives had impacted the people and it caused the people to trust us enough to try the product. When they tried the product, they found out it was local, that it was a global standard and it fitted their needs. So I'm about to ask you a very simple question. I hope it will not hurt you. What have you done to build the market? Markets are like houses. You don't build the market, you can't build it. You know what?